In this video, I wanted to share a tip on the best way to mix colors for highlights when we paint red or orange flowers. It's not white because that makes them washed out and looking very unnatural. I'm talking about painting with opaque mediums. In this case, it's gouache and I will demonstrate that using the still life as an example. For this painting, I'm going to use 100% cotton watercolor paper. This is Arches. Gouache is not as demanding as watercolor as regards the quality of paper. But for this one, I want to do something different. I want to create a watercolor background, an interesting watercolor background, and then paint gouache on top of it instead of covering the whole sheet with gouache. The background in the reference photo is very soft and kind of blurry, so it's much easier to create that effect with watercolor than to try and blend gouache and try to cover the whole sheet of paper. Let's start on a wet surface, and then I'm just going to throw in some cobalt blue, some sap green, and maybe a little bit of indigo to push the background away from us to neutralize it, kind of hinting at the window frame there. There is also a lot of texture on the glass, so I'm going to use splattering. Everything is soft and flowing. And maybe let's add a few splatters of new gamboge to warm things up a little bit. I'm going to let all this dry and hopefully the background will look good and I can paint my still life on top of it. Let's sketch the vases and the flowers. When painting geometric objects like these vases, it's kind of hard to wing things, so it's better to have an accurate pencil drawing. Also, gouache covers pencil very easily, so I don't have to worry about pencil lines. But I do want to keep the painting pretty precise because my background is already in place. I will not be able to use negative painting and paint, make corrections around my flowers. So I want to be fairly precise with my gouache and not go outside those lines too much. If you want to try this painting, I will leave you the outline, the reference photo and the final painting in the community post. Go to the community tab on my channel and you will find all the materials. I know it's sometimes hard to see on the screen what I'm doing here, so if you want to try this painting you will have the outline. And I found this photo in the free reference photos for artists group on Facebook. All right, we are ready to start painting with gouache. On my disposable palette I have cadmium yellow. I also have two reds, one, one warm and one cool. Glycerin Crimson is my cool red. And I have two blues. I have Cobalt Blue and I have Phthalo Blue. And of course, I have two daubs of white. I want to keep them separate. One for mixing with warm colors and one for mixing with cool colors. And I will be doing all my mixing in the center of my disposable palette. I'm going to start by just massing in all my elements, basically painting with object colors. So the roses are red. Violets are blue. Well, we don't have violets, so we have pansies and they're purple and yellow. So just using a flat brush and looking for shapes and just trying to distribute my flowers and all the elements of the painting on my sheet of paper. The trick here will be, it will be easy for me to show shadows on these roses because I will just use a cooler version of this red. I will use my alizarin crimson by itself or mixed with the red that I'm using for roses, this primary red, the trick will be to show lighter areas. And if you ever tried painting something red or orange flowers, or even if you paint people, if you mix the object color, the red with white, it becomes washed out and it doesn't work. So I will show you in just a second what I'm going to do. First of all, you will see how mixing with white doesn't work and then I will show you what I'm going to do, how I will make a correction.
For the first stage of my painting, I'm just working on big forms, the flowers, the leaves, I'm painting them very generally. And of course, I need to put down some color for both vases. The bigger one is kind of gray, which I don't have. I think purple in this case will look nice. It will tie it with the pansies. I'm neutralizing that purple with a little bit of yellow also gives me that color that I see in the middle tone. I think the pansies cast a little bit of yellow glow on the on that face. So that's what I'm trying to capture with my color mixing. That little glass bowl might seem tricky to paint, but it's actually very easy. We just need to paint exactly what we see. The overall tone is bluish gray. Then the stems reflect on the bottom of it, so there will be a couple of darker shapes with a little bit more green in them, and there will be a few highlights that I will add in just a second. I'm debating how to show the shadows under the vases. I think what I'm going to try for now is darkening them with gouache, I probably should have made them a little bit darker with watercolor, but it, the sh both shadows are very dark under those vases, so I'm going to add a little bit of accent there with gouache, and I'll leave them alone for now. I'll balance them when the painting is at a more completed stage. Moving on to darkest darks. With opaque mediums, that's usually the next step that we want to do after we distributed all the object colors. So squinting when looking at the reference photo and trying to find darkest areas on the flowers and on their vases. So you see, I'm trying to work fairly precisely because I will not be adding the background around my flowers. The background is done. So I want to paint those shapes fairly precisely from the get-go. the left side of the bigger vase, give some more definition to those two forms. So moving on to middle tones, they're not very many darks. I do need to add some on the roses, but I'm kind of putting it off at the moment. And there will be some reflected light on both sides of the vase. It's a rounded object, so the light kind of slides off of it and there will not be a hard edge. There will not be a dark edge, neither on the left nor on the right side of that vase. And the same goes for the little one. It will be the darkest in the middle and then it will be lighter on both edges. Maybe I'll add a vertical here. I don't know if it's that strictly necessary, but I kind of like the, how it grounds the flowers. So I'll just hint at the window frame behind them. This is totally optional. I think if you did not put it in, it will be fine as well. Just flowers on a soft watercolor background. I do want to darken the horizontal plane to give them something to stand on. those darker areas on the roses. First thing I'm going to do is mix some purple. I'm actually using my primary red, my pearl red, mixed with blue to add the darkest areas. Very important to squint when looking at the reference photo at this stage. 
because I don't want to paint separate little petals. I want to create those dark shapes. It's not time to work on smaller details yet. Working with artist gouache, which is water-based paint, gum arabic binder, same as watercolor. So it's very easy to mix subsequent layers by just using slightly damp brush. I can kind of reconstitute the previous layer and mix it with the subsequent layers. And let's try adding some highlights on the roses. I'm going to mix pink, I'm going to lighten my pyrrole red with white and add lighter areas on the roses. That color works to a certain extent. I already kind of revealed to you that I will be doing something different a little bit later in this painting process, but there are some areas that are that cool red, the pink color. So this effort was not wasted. It just did not work completely. So if you're going to try this painting, don't skip this step. Try to find those lighter areas, but also follow through and add more highlights by mixing your red with yellow. You see, I'm adding some fresh colors to my palette. I have Hansa Yellow Light. I have my cadmium yellow medium that I was already using and I have some fresh red and some fresh white. I want to warm up those lighter areas. You see, I'm using a very small brush. I'm adding some intense red to cover those washed out areas, only leaving tiny little slivers of that pink color because I think that pink will appear only on the very edge of each petal. I also want to warm up my shadows my original intent was to use alizarin crimson, but instead I used purple mixed from warm red with blue, and that color was just too dark and too cold. So I'm warming up my shadows with alizarin crimson. That's another correction that I made at the second stage of working on my painting. This is next day actually that I'm working on it. I give myself a break and kind of analyzed my painting again and saw that it needs more work. So it's very important not to give up on your painting. If it doesn't look exactly right, try a slightly different approach, think about it and see what else you can do to improve it because most likely it will be better after you work on it a little bit more. Okay, and here come my warm highlights. I added just a tiny bit of warm red into my cadmium yellow. I'm adding color to those petals that the light hits the most. You can very clearly see them in the reference photo. Adding that warm orange to those petals and I'm keeping the mixture with white only to the very edges of the flowers that are in highlight. So they have that cooler pink glow, but the petals th themselves need to be warm. And I think immediately the roses start looking even actually red instead of looking so washed out a color. I can also add some highlights to my vase and find a few more highlights in other areas of the painting, maybe on the leaves. There are some cooler highlights on them as well that I kind of lost in the process or didn't get around to painting yet. On my website, kaseniainis.com, I have a class on painting watercolor in combination with gouache. In that class, I only use white gouache. If you would like to check it out, I left you the link in the description below and also in the card for this video. So make sure you go back and check out that link after you're done watching the video. Let's also cool and deepen the shadow on the, on the vase. I think the more different color brush strokes we put on it, the better it looks. And also the roses cast that warm glow on the vase that I need to paint as well with my yellow. I put on some of that uh, Hansi yellow light. It's kind of lemon yellow color, but it's, I can tell already it's too cool. I might, I'm not going to use it for, for the roses, but I will use it for pansies. I need to do something about that shadow on the bottom. I think I'm just going to soften it with some clean water, maybe lift a little bit of color because it's just too harsh for a shadow. Soften the edge. Shadows usually don't have super defined edges unless you're in super bright sun. Like I said, it's artist gouache, so it's easy to reconstitute with water, easy to soften, to lift it. 
and I can also use my white to make tiny little corrections on the windowsill. I try to put that fallen petal, I think there's something under the vase, so there is a petal or something, but it didn't quite, it just looked weird, so I'm going to get rid of it and touch up a little bit with white in that spot. I'm trying to blend it with the rest of my painting. Okay, the shadow looks much better, I think that's enough. I've messed with it for quite enough now. I need to put a few brush strokes on the leaves to give them maybe a couple more details. I kind of lost the stems of those pansies. I'm going to add those real quick. The green I'm using is mixed from blue and yellow again. I did not use any green paint. And let's also brighten the pansies with a little bit of yellow as well. I kind of lost it in the process of working on them. Here's the painting before I corrected the highlights, before I added warm highlights, red mixed with yellow. And here is the final painting after I made all these corrections. You can see how different it looks and I think it looks quite improved. So let me know what you think about it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video on Tanner Rob Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!